Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You've sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not fear with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. I want to talk about this house. This house. Well, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, you already know this. You've been hearing this all of your lives, especially since you've been in the faith and in the family of faith, and that is that the Lord loves you. <laughs> and you already know that you're his children, that he has taken you, and that he has guarded you, and that he has received you, that he is holding you, that he is protecting you that he is keeping you even when you can't keep yourself. You already know that. But the law of common expediency says to us that we have to prioritize. And the law of common expediency says, make first things first. And the first priority for the Lord from you is that you ought to take care of his house. <laughs> yeah. And the first law of expedience for you is that you ought to take care of your own house. And let me say it again, Aretha Franklin sang this song. I will not give you all of the lyrics, but she sang it many years ago. It went something like this, just the start of it. Uh, this is the house that Jack built, y'all remember this house, but I want to tell you this is not the house that Jack built. <laughs> this is the house that the Lord built. Now listen to the Lord Jesus in Matthew 16 and 18, I believe. Jesus talking. When Jesus talking, we need to listen. When Jesus talks, we need to shut ourselves off and give him an opportunity to speak to us so that whatever it has, has vibrancy. And it not only has vibrancy, but it's, it echoes. And remember this, there are some people who speak and when they finish, you don't remember it. But when Jesus talked, the word of the Lord reverberates. It echoes and it's like when the music is over, the melody continues to linger on. Listen to Jesus. Upon this rock. He'd ask Peter, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Peter said that you, some say you, Elijah, some said Jeremiah, uh, one of the prophets. And Jesus asked him that question again because he was the victrolic one. Who do you say that I am? Peter said, I don't have to ask anybody. Oh, you know, I'm adding to it. You know that. Peter said, I don't want to talk to nobody. I already know. <laughs> You're the son of God. And Jesus said, flesh didn't tell you that. Blood didn't tell you that. But upon this rock, upon this reality, upon this truth that you've spoken, I will build my church and the very gates of hell will not prevail against it chief cornerstone of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ and whoever comes against it uh, will stumble. <laughs> you know, Jesus is the head of the church and acknowledges ownership and you also know that the church word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which means a drawn out community. It has to do with a unique people, a people who have been purchased by him, who have been set apart a people who are different. Let me say it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, unless you forget it, unless you look at me strange, unless you say I'm on the wrong program, unless you say I'm on the wrong avenue and on the wrong street. Yeah, I'm at your house this morning. You've been saved. And when you've been saved, you've been set apart. You can't be like everybody. You can't do what everybody is doing. You can't go where everybody goes. And you can't take up the habits of everybody else. You are unique. 
God has invested in you and you can't even go incognito. There's nowhere you go that God hadn't put a mark, a seal on you. The Bible says that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You have been redeemed, you have been bought with a price and you are no longer your own. You are the elect. That's what he said, this is what the word says. You are the elect, everybody say elect. Yes. Elect of the Lord, which means that you've been chosen and Jesus said, you didn't choose me. Come on, talk to me. But I chose you. You are a select group of believers. Let me tell you who you are. I know you don't want to hear this this morning. Yeah, you'll be all right with this because some of you don't, but you are God's VIP. Yeah. You are God's <laughs> VIP. Well, you may not get an invitation to some of these balls and to some of these galas and to some of these events and to some of these parties and maybe you're not a political specialist. Maybe you're not on their role and maybe they don't have you on their list, but I want to tell you, you're on God's list. And when you get on God's list, you ought to be thankful. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> he went on to say, when he entered into Jerusalem, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, he got to his daddy's house, and when he went in, he saw the money changers, he saw the thieves, he saw the robbers. He took a cord, and he began to whoop that Rolly Michael Jones. That's what my mama would say. <laughs> Grandma would say he whooped their tails, you know, whooped their behinds. I mean, he started running them out of the temple. And then he said, this is, listen to what he said. This is my, my father's. You just can't treat my father's house any kind of way. You just can't do what you want to do in my father's house. This is my, come on, everybody said my. And in my father's house, my house shall be called a, a house of prayer. He went on then to demonstrate it. Larry Lee talks about it in his book, uh, could you not tear one hour? He said it specifically. I like the way he put it. He, he made it a house of purity, and then he made it a house of power. Then he made it a house of perfected praise. I love that because when you look at the Greek, the word for house comes from the Greek word oikos. Oikos has to do with the whole house. I want you to know God is not interested in part of you. He wants all of you. This is the household of faith God has given us. Listen to what the Bible says. I want you to repeat this after me. So you quit whining and quit complaining, quit belly aching and quit lying like the rest of them. Quit joining in that course. Here it is. Let's repeat it together. He has given us everything that pertains unto life and godliness. Well, if God has given you everything, why are you crying? He cannot lie. He didn't say some things. Paul went on to say, my God, my God shall supply. He didn't say some of your needs. He said all of your According to his, come on, by Christ Jesus. You can wake up on that right now. <laughs> you see, if he's done all this, given us everything we need and everything that pertains unto life and godliness, and he supplied all of our needs, that means to me that he's given us a quality of life. He's given us a circumspect life, an internet life, an enterprising life an impactful life, a loving life, a faith-filled life, a life that always reproduces itself for the good of all who come into contact with us, a life that is above board. There's not a person in here who ought to be sad and melancholy and suffering. There's not anybody in here who ought to have a dour personality. Lift up your head! Lift up your head!
lift your mind up. You ought not have a paralysis of thinking. You ought not be parked in neutral this morning because you're blessed. I said you're blessed. You're blessed above measure. Your thinking ought to arise. Come on, your habits ought to arise. Your conduct ought to arise. Your character ought to arise. I'm telling you, you ought to be energized this morning. You ought to be impacting others. You ought to have enough influence and enough power in your life. Well, this is not the time. This is not time. We're living in critical time. Things are going crazy with what's happening with the president, what's happening with Congress, what's happening with the senators and in the House of Representatives. I mean, it looks like everything. But it's not only in America. It's not only in Greece. It's not only in Europe. It's, it, it's everywhere. Things are top, top, topsy-turvy. Look, not only at the economic sphere, but look at the climatic changes that are occurring around the nations and around the world in all of the states. You ever heard of all 29 states at one time having such a crazy heat wave? I mean, things are happening all around the world, but I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't make any difference what's happening. It's not time for the saints to retreat. No, 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 no. It's not time for us to back up off of the word and to retreat from our faith and from our beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know, ladies and gentlemen, if you are, don't have a, if you are being taken against your will in terms of the hedge funds and all of these other things, I want you to know you don't have to worry about that because God will hedge you in. God is out. Come on, listen to me. God, you, you all ready for this? God is our hedge fund. <laughs> oh. How many of you know he's got a hedge built around you right now? <laughs> so I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you need to dig in and you need to put your foot down and show all around you and all who are concerned the intensity of your faith, the intensity of your belief. When you work the word of God, God's word will work. There's nothing that he's ever said that will fall to the ground. God's word stands alone and without anybody to prop it up, it's independent and it's sustaining and the promises of God are yet the same. They are not like us. Listen to what God says, I'm not a man. That's what he said, I'm not a man. I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither the son of man that he has to repent. And Paul says, the words of God, the promises of God are not yes and no. Come on now. But what? Yes and to the glory of God the Father. You know what the word amen means? It's so. <laughs> Before, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not trying to use uh, just some little old trick on words and that kind of thing, but I want you to hear me. Before God says anything, it's already done. <laughs> Before he got to get it out of his mouth, it's already approved. God has given us everything we need to facilitate his ministry until he returns. If God can't supply it, you don't need it. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 10 through 13. Now he who supplies seed to the soil and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and when enlarge the harvest of your righteousness, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. God says, I'm going to bless you so that you will continue to be a blessing. But I'm not gonna bless you so you can hoard it so you can be selfish with it and so you can put it all on your back. 